How many of you have been into space? Probably not so many of you. But how much space has influenced your life since you got up this morning? Let me give you a day in the life of an ordinary person. This could be you, it could be me, it could be any of us. Well, this man wakes up, puts the radio on, and listens to the weather forecast. This is what he hears. The Bada Bunga volcano eruption may have serious consequences on air traffic today. Short after, he takes his new shock-absorbing shoes to go jogging. Later on in the morning, he has a business appointment in a far suburb of Paris and checks the shortest route to take on Google Maps. One o'clock lunchtime, he looks at TV news. There's a live interview of an explorer who is currently in the Arctic. Just after, he has to run at his dentist because he broke a tooth and needs a quick repair. Later on in the afternoon, he takes a power plate class. Afterwards, he has to do a scan in order to check his leg condition six months after a ski accident. Later on, at the end of the evening, he can relax by playing on his grand piano Steingraber. That's it. So, how many space applications or elements did you find in this story? Four? Six? Eight? Well, ten in fact. Weather forecasts are based on Earth observation satellite data. And by the way, space is a key tool for the monitoring of the environment. Shock-absorbing shoes are coming from space technology, while well, Google Maps is based on a system of geolocalization by satellite. And what about the interview of the Arctic Explorer? Well, this is a live satellite link uh, which allowed that. Concerning uh, the explorer in the Arctic, he is keeping warm by wearing a special coat made of smart material, especially uh, developed for space missions in order to resist extreme climatic conditions. Dental cap, space technology. And what about the power plate class? Well, initially, this was developed for astronauts in order for them to keep their bone mass. The bone plates as well are body repair elements, also space technology. And so does the scanner. And finally, some pianos get some parts made of uh, carbon also issued from space technology. So, as you can see, there are so many space-related innovations in our daily lives that we are not even aware of. But at what cost? Many people are concerned at a time of economic crisis about are spending too much on space programs. And maybe some of you are concerned about the cost uh, of space development to the environment, both on Earth and in space. This is the negative aspects of space, what I usually call the dark side of the moon, as you can see here, right? Well, I care a lot about these concerns myself. 
I'm not an astronaut, nor a rocket scientist. I'm not even an engineer. I'm a kind of an alien in the world I work in. Yes, I'm an alien at the European Space Agency in this world of superhumans because I'm not from the so-called space world by education. But I'm one of those people who creates links, who establishes passes between worlds, systems, disciplines, and above all, between people. This is why I, I'm here. And I've been working on sustainability since well before it was fashionable. Human, economic, and environmental sustainability. So I care a lot about cost and environmental impacts. Now I would like to address the main concerns people generally have about space programs and space development. The first one is cost. Is space really a luxury we can't afford? Well, of course, space costs money, indeed. But like any high technology activity. But let me show you something. Here's the Earth, here's Jupiter, and here comes the Sun. The Earth represents the European Space Agency's budget, four billions per year. Jupiter, the European Agricultural Policy, more than 50 billion euros per year. And the sun represents the American annual defense budget for 31 billion euros. So, like the Earth, our budget isn't small. But in comparative terms, it's not so big. The number two concern, space pollutes the Earth. Well, if you take a rocket launch, many people think that rocket launches cause huge pollution to the environment. But if you take an ion launch, for instance, this might pollute less than an intercontinental flight between Paris and New York, and there are only five to six Ariane launches per year. Compare this with twice as many direct flights from Paris to New York every single day. So in comparison to air travel pollution, space doesn't even register on the scale. And finally, people worry about the amount of space pollution our space programs produce in space. Look at this. And let me throw it. <laughs> Did I hurt anybody? Of course not. But imagine if instead of being made of light plastic, it was slightly harder and heavier, and if it was going at a speed of 20 times a bullet, would that hurt? You bet it would. Well, there are more than 200,000 man-made objects of this size or bigger, spinning around the Earth and my, that might cause huge damages to both satellites and to the International Space Station. But the good news are that not only are we taking steps 
to solve this problem, we are going to clean it up. We have plans for this. So our future space investment will try and solve this problem and not making it worse. So in the end, space development delivers a lot to our daily lives. The cost is not so much, and our space programs are getting cleaner and more sustainable. So before I finish, I would like to show you some pictures. These were taken by Alexander Gerst, our German ESA astronaut currently on board the International Space Station. He shares these on his Twitter feed. Look at this. Yet, when was the last time you watched at a rocket launch on TV? Hmm? Well, that's what I thought. At, for our parents' generation, every single launch was a huge event. Now, we take space for granted. Our parents' generation was the pioneering space age, where everything was new and exciting, and we were, when we worked so hard to put life into space. Our generation is the generation of the space maturity, where we moved from dreams to reality, from hope to expectation, from pioneering to mastering. And where now that we, where that we put life into space, we are reaping the rewards of it into our daily life. But believe me, space has just started to surprise us. So let's all take a moment to stop, think, and be happy to have some of space into our lives on Earth. Thank you. <laughs>